Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of um, Book Club and this week we're going to be talking about uh, the Hall of the Dragon King, uh, the dra well the Dragon King series the, uh, in the Hall of the Dragon King I believe um, by Stephen L. Lawhead. Uh, it, it's kind of an interesting um, book if I'm honest. We're going to separate this into like... I don't know, let's say, let's say like storyline, feel good, and like characters. So let's first talk about the characters, because um, I, I can't keep talking about some of the uh, other things. So the main character is a character called Quinten. He is a young acolyte in the Hall of Ariel? I think Ar Ariel, like, the, the thing about the book is it's that, it's, it's that, it's that, not, I wouldn't say boring or bland, but it's that, ugh, something about it, everything, it's just, yeah, this is stick to the character, and I'll discuss that in a minute, so he, 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 he gets awoken one night when he's having, he has these dreams and vision, like, visions, um, and he sees signs of things to come. Now, uh, there is an, a knight which has been gravely injured. And you find out later on in the story. Obviously, if you guys have read it. That he was ambushed by somebody. Uh, Ronsard. Um, and the Ronsard character is okay. It's a very chivalrous knight as you would expect. And he sends Quentin out on this quest. And this is where the story begins. With his, not, well not his horse. But one of his companions that died horse and the horse I can't remember what the horse was called um but yeah I really didn't really really there's a few other characters obviously in the book uh main characters which was Tolly uh, a very very prestigious character in the book the the main villain was very much very much a villainous character and he seemed to be all bark and hardly any bite, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, the characters were very, like, very set in their roles. So you had the good characters, you have the bad characters, you have the, like, not in-between characters, it was like good and bad characters. You didn't really have anybody in the in-between, I didn't think. Well, I didn't feel like that anyway. So for the characters, it was, yeah, it was okay. It was really hard because I didn't, I, I enjoyed the book. Just didn't enjoy, like, I really enjoyed the book, don't get me wrong. The book was really, like, that's why I want feel good, a feel good section. So let's talk about the, well, that's some of the characters. Um, the other few characters, you've got, um, uh, is it Derek? And he's the city, uh, the queen's, like, not servant, but guard. Um, you've got Darwin, I mean, Derwin, sorry, and he's like an ex-priest, ex-sorcerer, like, he, he's, he was very powerful, but he gave up all his powers. Um, the Queen, obviously, and she, for some reason, she's along on this journey, which, yeah, sure, why not? And it was very, very strange. It was like, this, this, is, what made, this is what made me laugh. The Queen fucked off on the journey. She left her daughter in the castle... With the guy who she's trying to take down. Any other, like, writer would say, well, that's going to happen. Like, the the prince is going to take advantage of this and going to, you know, either find a way to get to that door to get to the queen to stop her doing what she's doing or something else. But he doesn't. Like, he's the most thickest bastard in the world. Like, it, it was very annoying to me. The storyline was, it, it was good. It just had plenty of plot holes. It was a very, a very Lord of the Ringsy type journey. Everything went right. This guy, the 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 Quentin, he he found two guys who he trusted in the woods, who he'd never met before. He trusted them, and they turned out to be good guys. He was stood outside a skinner's shop, and or a fur shop, I believe they call it in in that. And all of a sudden. A woman turns up and invites him to the palace. There's, there's no him 
being smart and getting into the palace, he literally walks in. And then we had, well, there was, there was loads of this ball BS. I think he got attacked and he didn't die by some uh, venom, but that was fine to say that he was the chosen one. That was fine. I was fine by that. You know, this happens in books and stories and anything else. Um, but it was just it, it, that uh, Tolly decided to stay behind because he never died of a venom. Are you telling me in the whole history of that place, somebody hasn't died? Why does he think Quentin's such a great man? Why not Ron Surd? I know that he didn't see Ron Surd at this time, sorry. Um, why not uh, Th Thanos? Is it Thanos? It's not Thanos, definitely not Thanos. I think it's Than Thanos. But yeah, why not Thanos? Why not um, Derwin? Why not, why not the Queen? I mean, why Quentin? He was a fit. He's like a 15-year-old, or is he 17? 15 or 17? I can't remember. Um, do -do 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 -do. Don't know. I, I forget these things really quick, and I can't get the information up, so it's fine. But why didn't he follow any of those? It's, it's a very short book as well, so I understand that he didn't. I'm guessing the writer didn't want to go into all this intrigue. But it's like, why couldn't? Oh yeah, let run of the story. They have no money. They meet a ship ma master who pays for everything, literally everything. He 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 finds out how to get onto this island what, where the, the the necromancer is. He he literally pays for the horses to be stabled. He take he, he boats them there. He he investigates for them. He comes up with a plan to get them onto the island, and all they do is basically burst out the barrels and run off. Like, how the hell are they taking credit for any of this? And how is Tolly still with this guy? Like, he just found out he's useless. It's really weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's really weird. And then he has this mystical um, dream when he's in that um, mine ruined city. I can't remember what it was called. Was it like Day Herd or something? I can't remember. Um. And, and that shows him that he's going to be a great warrior or a great knight. What the fuck is up with my hair? Um, yeah, a great warrior, a great knight. And you see a vision of him with a burning sword and him slashing all these like thingies down, to, down together. And this actually happens, I think, in the second book or the third book. Because obviously there are three books and I have listened to three quarters of the way through the second book because I had spare time. And I wanted to really give this series a chance. And if I'm honest, in the second books, it does get a lot better. But not to the standard that I would like, if you see what I mean. There are still the BS good guys. I mean, it was kind of kind of crazy. I mean, not not let alone this, this sailor sent this guy off to wherever he wanted to go. He helped him go to the spec. Even if this guy is that kind, he's just sent a young, two young fifteen-year-old boys or fifteen and the seventeen. I can't remember how. I don't know how old Tolly is. Boys to their death on a necromancer's island, and when they're on that island, they do get away from the guards, which is fine because of Tolly's natural abilities, which I really like his natural abilities. I think it is that is one of the really nice um, aspects of this. He's got like because he's a a, a jahad or a jahir pronouncements i'm not sure um he he has really heightened sight hearing and i think smell and he's really good in like the brush in that so that's a really cool thing to 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 know about him but it's just like why not 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 like well why has he got this but it's like why why is he with quentin and he does so much for him this is the really annoying thing as well it's like quentin should be following totally if anything but the, 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 the god has plans for Quentin, and I don't know why. I mean, it's just really strange. It's really strange. I don't, I don't know why. But it, I, I do like the... I do like the... Don't get me wrong. The, the storyline, I like it. It's just too convenient. Like, in real life, anywhere in real life. Like, go to any city in the world. Go back as far as you want in time. None of this would happen. Nobody would be this kind. Don't care unless you were like maybe a relative or they owed you or you had a lot of money or something like that. Do you know what I mean? 
That's what I found was a bit ridiculous. So the whole the whole mission, um, if hopefully you guys have read it, and you'll know the whole mission is to rescue King Escobar, and that is the whole point of this series is to discuss the book, not for me to review the book, if you know what I mean. I'm just saying things that I like about the book and uh, talking about, and hopefully you guys can come back at me and tell me what you like about the book and what you didn't like about the book, and you know, hope, yeah. But yeah, it's cool. Um, but yeah, like, uh, then the the necromancer uh, left, uh, luckily, on the exact day that they went to break in and free and left two guards in the whole castle. I know you've built up this whole, yeah, I am the baddest man, and nobody's going to come to my island. But you had guards on the beach. Like, I think they said, like, there was... I can't remember, like, 10? Something like that? 12? Why have you got 12 guards down on the beach? And two guards guarding the prison, your most important prisoners that you have? Why? <laughs> I mean, I understand the King Escobar thing, that he didn't have a lot of guards guarding him, and he only had that shade thing. Um, which was probably Quentin's most best moment in the whole whole si whole book. And obviously, the only reason why he's finding he found that tomb is because the one God wanted him to find it, and he was giving him signs and directions to do it. See, I could understand that, and I could buy this. Just don't like some of the goddamn too much convenience, too much convenience in the in the thing. But let's move on from that. Let's go to the feel goods now. Now, reading this book does like. Um, I would say it restores a lot of faith in your hu in humanity. So you're like, yeah, this is really cool. I have now, I now have faith in humanity. You people actually care about people and will do stuff for people. I mean, don't take that, you know, too much to heart, and don't go out in the world and thinking everybody's going to do everything for everybody because they won't. People will help people, but not as much as some of the people in this book did. Um, and it was very. I, I liked it gave me a very good feel good because it was very much going away from everything that I've been reading like listen to recently where there's good buys and there's guys in the middle with bad guys and you have to try to like think things out it was pre pretty much laid out for you this is the plot line this is what's going to happen if you don't like it leave and that was it and that was literally it I mean and it literally even even told you at the beginning of the book we're gonna. It doesn't matter if King Escobar comes back or not. Quentin's gonna be a badass by the end of this book. I mean, we don't know. We know the mission is to save King Escobar, but we don't know him for shit. So we don't, we're not emotionally attached to this dude. We don't care about him. We all we care about is Quentin being a badass and totally being a badass beside him. And that's it. And in number in in the uh, in the, I don't want to give any spoilers, but if you guys do go to read the second book. It does get a lot better. It's there's like a time skip, so it, it it justifies all the changes to the characters and makes them a lot better. But yeah, that's what I thought of this book. Um, if I was gonna rate this book, I'd probably give it a five out of ten. Like, it's not that it's a bad book. It's just that it's there's too much convenience in the book. Um, the characters are very. They have weak reasons for doing what they're doing. Uh, like even Quentin wanted to go along with these these random people to go save the king. It's a very weak reason for him doing that. I know he wants to like strike out and do stuff like that, and he wants to have this mission and that. But like lad, I don't, I don't know. Like it just it just seems to me everything just seems a bit a little bit weak in this book. Where in the next book, everything it seems to, this book seems to set everything up for the next book, but it seemed like he writ the second book before he writ the first book, um, and he was trying to just put everything into place. Uh, so far, of what I've read, and, and that's that's what I would say about that. Uh, so next week, um, yeah. So next week, I think we're gonna do. I don't really want to do the second one of this book, but I guess I could. Maybe I'll just... How many books are there in this series? I can't remember. Maybe I'll just do both of them, just so it um, bashes them all out of the way. 
and the flame, the sword, and the flame. So I think there are two more. Okay, that's not bad. No, there are only two more. So yeah, there are only two more to trilogy. So we're not gonna do that from this week. Uh, we might do that the week after. No, we won't. We're doing another the week after, which is like a million words. So that one, might, that one might be like a month project. Like we'll work, we'll do like short books like this one, and then we'll do like the big book at the end of the month. But it's like a million words or something. Would be, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's like the Scarlet City, I think, believe. But we might do that um, for the whole month next month. I don't know. Um, but I want to go back to. This is it. I want to go back to the blade itself before they are hanged. So we listened to the we we lit, we we did the blade itself, and I want to go back to um, before they are hanged. It's can't. I don't think it's that much of a long book. It's only six hundred six hundred. Yeah, six hundred and thirty-three pages. So it's not too bad. It's not too long. Uh, wow. Later books get a bit longer, but I'm fine with that. Uh. I want to go. Uh, I definitely want to go back to that one because it's gonna. That one was getting really interesting at the end, and I was getting really into it. And then obviously it ended, and we. I didn't want to keep just doing series in a row, so I'm gonna go to that one. And then next week, hopefully, we'll start on the dragon. Maybe the dragon one uh, the week after, but we'll also be reading the other one in the background. So at the end of the month, we can do the. Uh, million word book but I don't know I don't know it all depends on whether I can what's gonna happen but yeah that's gonna be that for the moment but yeah I do want to do before they hang by Joe Abercrombie it will be in the it will be in the uh, the it will be down there in the description down below hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, this book book club uh tell me what you think about the book down below tell me if there's any other books you want me to read down below i will be doing the, the scarlet city as i said i know you guys suggested you also suggested glorious bastards uh, i probably will be doing that in the future i just need to get a hold of a copy um but yeah hopefully you guys have enjoyed <laughs> if you had have leave a like written down below and i'll see you guys next time please